Yo guys, how's it going? This is Biss Rugby, and as a Wales fan, the worst thing happened on Sunday. Not only did we lose against the arch enemies in England in a Rugby World Cup warm-up, but we lost one of our key men in Gareth Anscombe, who suffered an ACL injury and will likely be out for most of the 2019-20 season, but more importantly, certainly out of the Rugby World Cup. So the big question is, who will replace him? Now, the obvious answer is Dan Bigger, and I'm going to assume that Gatlin will go with Dan Bigger, but who will be the second-choice fly-half in the tournament in Japan? Today, we're going to have a look at that. We're going to look at stats. We're going to hear my opinion on it. We're going to look at style of play. We're going to look at it all and make our minds up make sure to subscribe we're trying to hit 300 subs before the start of the rugby world cup if you subscribe you're helping me to reach that goal let's get into the video make sure to comment your thoughts down below let's do it so over the past two years or so, Gatland has really been aiming to build his side around Gareth Anscombe, giving him the opportunity to prove to him that he's going to be his number one choice at fly-off. It seems like he was bigger coming off the bench and having an impact later on. First of all, we're going to look at some stats. And the two main runners for this jersey at the minute are the two players in camp, that is Rhys Patchell and Jared Evans. Honourable mentions has to go to the likes of Rhys Priestland. Uh, you could even put someone like Sam Davis in there of the Ospreys, but I just don't think they're going to get the look in. But these two players are going to have a look at Patchell and Jared Evans, see how they compare to each other and come up with a conclusion, hopefully. I want to hear your thoughts, of course, down below. So we've gone on Rugby Pass, which have a fantastic stats website, and we're going to go through them now. First of all, we're going to look at influence. Now, influence really talks about a few little subjects. It talks about a player's impact within two minutes of a winning point, so within a penalty scored or a try scored. So how much influence are they? How much are they on the ball? How many passes are they doing? Are they getting the try assist? What are they doing? And this is looking at the past season of 2018-19 for club only. Because both players hardly played for Wales in that time period. In fact, Patchell's only got 11 caps and Jared Evans has only played 5 minutes for Wales in his very short career. So, very interesting reading. Influence, so how much impact they have in those 2 minutes before the winning point. Patchell's on 51 well, Jared Evans is on 73 for the season, which is very, very high. Really impressive. One of the highest in the Pro 14, in fact. He is doing very, very well. Now we look at goal success. How good are they at kicking the points? Down at the Scarlets, Lee Halfpenny takes a lot of the kicking, but also Patchell. And at the Blues, last season, it was Anscombe at 10. So Anscombe was doing a lot of the kicking, but Anscombe has now gone to the Ospreys. So you think Jared Evans would get more of an opportunity down at the Arms Park. But kicking success is equal, 86% for both players. Really equal and a decent figure that is as well, 86%. Attacking wise then, attacking really looks at line breaks. Beaten defenders, won penalties and successful offloads. So their willingness really to attack. And both players are known for their attacking ability, much more so than Dan Bigger. And much more like their player they will be successing in Gareth Anscombe. And they are very, very close. But Jared Evans just about snatches this one. 78 points to 77. So Jared Evans with 78 and Patchell with 77 so as you can see fairly equal Jared Evans maybe a bit more attack minded willing to try things to go for things Patchell maybe of um, more a team player sits a bit deeper kicking a bit more as we'll see with territorial kicks now um, Patchell's at 83 and Jared Evans is at 81 so Patchell tends to kick that little bit more looks for the territorial kick looks to dictate the game through kicking the ball a bit more so, as I said, Patchell has 11 caps for Wales, so not that many at all. He's got 49 points in them games he played against South Africa and Scotland and some other minnows. Um, not so Scotland and South Africa minnows, but a few other smaller teams. While Jared Evans has the one cap which came against Tonga when Wales' second string side beat Tonga last November. That is it. That's all they have. And, yeah, he has not got many caps. Jared Evans as a player, I, I really like him, I really rate him, a really exciting youngster, lots and lots of potential. Is he ready to be a player, to come on at a Rugby World Cup, and if Bigger gets injured in the Rugby World which I hope it doesn't happen, because I think we'll be stuffed, possibly, 
But if it does happen, is Jared Evans ready to take that shirt and take it as his own and dictate a world-class international match? It's a big question and I'm going to be honest, in my opinion, it's a no. I don't think he's ready for that. I think he needs a season at the Blues as the first choice fly half to really show what he can do. Shown glimpses, 100% has. I've been super impressed by what he's able to do and his ability on the ball. He's so naturally gifted. He is someone that is pretty much a direct replacement for Anscombe, but I just don't think that he's ready for this one. Patchell, on the other hand, has done it for Wales. He's done it for Scarlets. I think he's ready to step into the mould. Let's have a look at the two of the players we mentioned briefly. We had Sam Davis and we had Reese Priestson. We're going to look at their stats quickly. Reese Priestson hasn't played for Wales for a very long time. He's at Bath currently and he's doing okay, I guess, but his stats are nowhere near Patchell's and Jared Evans. Priestson, influence wise, so having the influence in those two minutes before the winning point is down at 71. It's not great, but it's higher than Patchell's. Goal success is 81. Compare that to the two others at 86 apiece. Attacking is very, very low for Priestland. Just he's not the type of player to replace Anscombe at all. 66 compare that to 77 and 78 of the two of the players we were talking about. Territorial kicks very close to the other two, 81. But yet his stats just are nowhere near good enough to be considered against these two guys, in my opinion. Vast experience, yes. Did really well at 2011 Rugby World Cup. So he's been there at a Rugby World Cup. Understands the pressure. But I just don't think he's ready for this one. Sam Davis, for some reason, is listed as an outside centre. But his influence is actually at 82, which is really, really high. Um, with Jared Evans at 73 and Patchel at 51. 82 influence is really high, so he's involved in a lot of tries and in a lot obviously takes the kicks, but he's involved a lot. Attacking then is down at 66, so it's not great from Sam Davis. But it's going to be interesting to see what Gatlin goes with. I do think he'll back Patchell, and I would back Patchell certainly. I just think it's experience. I just don't think Jared Evans is quite ready for this one. He will definitely go to the Rugby World Cup, but Patchell can also play at fullback. Bit more experience, bit older, understands maybe how to fit into this team more, having played more for them. But certainly let me know down in the comments down below what do you think should Patchell get the nod, should Jared Evans, Sam Davis, Priestland, Owen Williams at Gloucester is another option that we haven't spoken about. So make sure to let me know in the comments down below, am I absolutely deluded and wrong or maybe do I speak a little bit of sense. Thank you very much for watching, make sure to subscribe, a video is coming out tomorrow, my team selection for Wales against England, can we get revenge, make sure to watch that one tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy, guys, and peace.